Hello and welcome to a After Effects tutorial video and in this video we'll be looking at how we can work with 360 images and create a basic 2D tracked 360 effect shot. So what you can see on screen at the moment is a 360 image I took of um, the University of Lincoln's art shop and all I've done is put this into a format, added some uh, animations, I've done a little bit of uh, masking so as you'll see here as I scrub along the timeline you can see this uh, social media text so as I scrub along the timeline you can see the social media text appearing from behind this uh, little shelving unit here and we'll be using the VR comp editor within After Effects so I'm going to show you how this was sort of created I'm not going to go through how all the little compositions was made uh, like this one here because again that's fairly uh, basic After Effects sort of stuff. Uh, I'm just going to go through how we import our 360 footage or images, how we use the VR comp editor and how we can readjust our camera and add a bit of masking etc. So I'm just going to start off with a new project, I'm going to go file new project. I'm not going to save any changes I've done to this project because I don't need to, I've not done any work to it. And I'm just going to close this panel here because that panel wouldn't be there for yourself unless you've uh, worked with the VR Composer before. And I'm just going to go to my desktop and I'm going to navigate to where my footage is. So what I did is because I was um, asked to do a 360 tour of the art shop whilst there's nobody around and there's no um, action, no fans or any movement, uh, instead of using footage I just took 360 images. And all the images and footage that I've used for this and uh, future 360 After Effects tutorial videos was captured using the Insta1R camera here. Um, again, the, the same principles you'll see in this video would work for the Rickock Theta or the um, Gear 360. So this wouldn't, again, I'm not going to go through how you would stitch together your 360 image if you're using um, standard, um, a non all-in-one 360 camera. Uh, because that comes a little bit more convoluted and that does change depending as time goes on. Um, but I'm just going to go through as if you've already got your footage or your image prepared. So I'm going to drag my image into my new project. I could also go to file import or right click import. Again there's many ways of importing a video or footage into After Effects. I'm not going to go through all the many manners. Uh, with my image selected in my project I'm going to click and drag it onto this little uh, film icon down the bottom which will create a new composition and we want to make sure that this composition is keeping to the size and dimensions of our 360 image so you'll notice that it's not 16 by 9 it's a lot wider um, that's because that's the format it needs to be in for the 360 to work so with our image selected and our composition created uh, there's a few things we can now need to do um, so at this point here you could edit this as if you were editing a normal piece of footage um, but if I want to actually get a preview or a sense of what changes I'm making would look like in a, v, um, in a VR or 360 output I need to select my layer, I go to window, I go to VR comp editor and this will open up a new window like so. I've already dragged and docked this onto my side so hence why it's docked over here for you it will probably just be floating. Uh, to dock it you just simply click and drag it um, until it clicks on the desired location you want it to be at. So with my image selected I'm going to go to add a 2D edit. So in this video we're only looking at the 2D edit, we're not looking at the camera moving forwards or backwards. It's a stationary position. Um, if we wanted to have the camera moving forwards and backwards and having things tracked then we would be using a 3D edit and we'll cover that in a future video. So I'm going to click add 2D edit. I'm going to keep the comp width to be 1920, so 1920 by 1080 or standard uh, sort of 16 by 9 resolution that you'd find on YouTube or most uh, TV screens for example. Make sure that my composition is set to be the image or the one that I is my 360 footage or image in this case. I'm going to keep the use two node camera, I'm not going to use the 3D node camera control or center camera on this occasion. So click add to the edit and what this will do is this will create us two new compositions or actually there's more than two but two that will open up for us. One is our VR2 output or the output of our 360 image or footage. This will be what we'd render out, so this would be where we'd go to file, render or add to render queue at the end. Um, and this VR edit 1 is essentially our preview window really. So this is a this image wrapped inside the sphere. So if I press C to bring up my camera controls, 
I can now click and drag around in this edit scene and you'll see that it's now a 360 wrapped image or composition. There we go. So there we go. Um, but uh, I can always go forwards and backwards between these two. Uh, it is advised by a lot of people that actually, if you are going backwards and forwards, that you should use the open output slash render, and this will take you back to the output window um, because it could possibly throw some errors up on some machines. I've not had any of these errors myself, so I'm not necessarily going to do worry about that too much. But for some people, you may be better to be on the safe side using the open output render to return to the final uh, video that you'd render out at the end. Uh, you'll also notice up here we have two options. We've got one for reorient. So this would be how we can reorient the uh, camera. Uh, I'm not going to reorient, reorientate the camera using this tool. I'm actually going to do it another way. And you might see why in a bit. Um, and then we've got a properties panel. Um, because we're using a 2D camera, we don't have any other properties available to us. If we were using a 3D camera, we'd be able to add in extra tools. So I'm going to go back to my original composition, so where my image or footage originally is. And this is what I'll be using to edit. So this, at this point, would be the same as if you were editing any piece of footage or anything else in After Effects. I can adjust things like scale, so I can have things um, popping up, I can have things moving, I can have uh, compositions within compositions. Uh, that's how I got the kind of uh, yellow circle bouncing up and down. That was actually a composition that I created in a window that I then dragged into this composition and basically built up uh, over time. Um, but what I want to do first is I'm not going to move anything, I'm not going to adjust any camera positions at the moment. Um, because if I start moving things now, it could cause some problems with my mask. So I'm going to make sure that I, for myself, I'm going to mask things first. Uh, for yourself, you may want to move things first. Um, skip ahead and then skip backwards if you're needing to reorientate things. Um, but for myself, I'm not going to do that yet for a very good reason. And the reason being, if I was to reorientate my camera now and then start masking, it can actually throw my mask off uh, a kilter. So I'm going to do my masking first and then worry about uh, reorientating afterwards. So I'm going to just duplicate my uh, layer. And what I want to do is I'm going to create something that pops up behind this circles, uh, this uh, bookshelf here. So I'm going to just create a new shape layer. And on the shape layer, I'm just going to create a circle. I'm just going to have this circle pop up from behind this bookshelf or this uh, sort of shelving unit. Uh, let's just give this a colour that's kind of in keeping with the theme of this. I'm not going to worry about the stroke. There we go. So I've got this circle. Uh, if I go back to my edit window here and press C, I can see that now my circle is now mapped to my scene. So this is what I'm saying. If you, everything you want to do, any edits to your 360 piece, uh, you need to do it on the original composition. So this is where you'd add in your text, uh, your footage, your images or video clips, etc. So uh, in some text sample there. I'm going to parent this to my shape like so. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to have this shape appear from behind these shelves. So with the text parented to my shape, I'm going to press P and I'm just going to start keyframing it and I want to have this sort of appear from behind the shelves. So I'm going to have drag this down to the bottom here. I'm going to hit the little stopwatch once to start keyframing and making sure that I don't click it again because if I click it again, it will remove my keyframes. And let's say over the period of two seconds, I want this to now go up and appear on this wall like so. So if I was to go to my window here and hit play, this should go up like so. But at the moment, as you can see, it's not actually behind my shelf. It's just in front of it. Um, this is where we kind of need to go back to why I duplicated my um, footage layer. So I'm going to drag my duplicate to the top. So this is basically creating a sandwich. So we're going to have our, um, essentially, like we, it's, it's a bit like a pop-up card. You have the things that you want um, at the forefront, then you have your mid, mid layer, and then you have your background. So we're building up this collage, this kind of uh, depth um, using these layers to sandwich the stuff that we want to be revealed behind the stuff that's going to be in front, essentially. So with this top layer selected, I'm going to use the pen tool. And with the pen tool selected and that first layer selected, I, it will um, make sure I've got the tool create masks option enabled, which it should be, hopefully. 
And I'm just going to zoom in and I'm going to very roughly, very quickly pen out and mask around this shelving unit. I'm not going to uh, spend too long on this. Again, you can do a better job if you've got more time. I'm trying to do this fairly quickly. That was a really bad one. Uh, the trick is to zoom in um, when you're doing masking, it makes life easier and you can hold space to uh, move around while still keeping the uh, masking option available when you let go. And now I'm just going to join this all up. It doesn't matter too much about all that sort of stuff. There we go. So now we have this uh, masked out and we should have the text and the image now appearing uh, behind it. If I turn the background layer back on, you should see that we have this uh, kind of effect now going on. I'm going to probably scale down my text a little bit because it's a little bit creeping over the edges. Like so, there we go. And there we are, that's a basic uh, thing. So if I go back to my footage here and now preview it, you should see that now we can have animations playing within our 360 footage. Now, let's just say I'm not happy with the orientation of my camera or the way that my um, sort of original starting point is. So to fix that, I'm going to go to my output. So this composition layer here, and then I'm going to go to my effects panel. So effects and presets, and I'm going to search for offset. So I'm going to drag this offset onto this VR conversion composition and I can now shift the center, so I can shift it left or right, and this will allow me to now readjust where the center is. So I want to make sure that's the very center of my composition, or where this little uh, like uh, sort of target is essentially, is positioned where I want the starting point of my video to be. So this would be where the viewer, when they first open up your 360 footage, would be looking before they start moving or tilting or panning around. So I can use this to adjust the uh, focal starting point. So I'm putting this like so. I can also adjust the up and down, but I probably wouldn't do that personally. Uh, not if you're working with a already captured all-in-one 360 piece. It could just cause you more issues. Uh, another thing we can do is we can use the VR sphere. So if I go to VR and we look for the VR rotate sphere and I drag this onto my um, composition or VR conversion layer. What this will allow me to do is I can do a similar thing. I can, this is very similar to the offset, so I can still rotate things on the Y axis, but it also gives me the option to tilt things on the X and Z. And I can keyframe these so I could have it, so let's just reset all this beginning. So I could say, at this point, I want the viewer to be looking here. And let's say it's going to do a full rotation over the period of around eight seconds. So if I go back to my VR preview window here and click play, we should start to see here that the uh, camera is panning. Uh, the reason it doesn't uh, pan within our VR edit view is because we're basically um, that's for us to view, it doesn't actually show us the movement. The movement is shown within, largely within this uh, output window here. So this would be, when it renders out, this would be um, moving the camera in that sphere, essentially. So again, you could use either um, offset or VR rotate sphere. Uh, offset is probably the uh, safest option, uh, unless you're wanting to do some crazy effects, where you can kind of have it shifting through or scaling or rotating around doing barrel rolls. If you need to do that, then use the VR rotate sphere, otherwise offset largely will be the best way of reorientating its starting position. You can also use this reorientate here. Uh, I'd prefer to use the offset just because it gives you more control, personally. So once we've created our piece and we're quite happy with it, we can then start looking at exporting it. So to export our footage, we need to make sure that we've got our VR output, so the actual, um, this view here, not the edit and not the original composition. We need to make sure we're working on the output one. 
So within After Effects, um, exporting the 360 footage, uh, the way I prefer to do it is I actually don't um, like to export it as a 360 piece from within After Effects. I like to actually take it back into Premiere. Uh, just because that ensures that my metadata is exported via Premiere rather than me having to use a third-party plugin. However, I can kind of do it within uh, After Effects. So I'm going to go to File, Export, and Add to Media Encoder. This will open up our Adobe Media Encoder application. Now, for me, I will get a little error message just because there's a plugin uh, missing on my machine, like so. So this will add it to our render queue. We want to keep the it says a H.264 if we're aiming to export it onto uh, YouTube, for example. And I'm just going to keep the match source high bitrate. Again, I don't want to be adjusting uh, any of these properties here. If I change any of these properties here, this will actually start to remove the um, formatting that we require for the 360 footage to work. I then give it a name and I'll choose a save location for it. So I'm just going to save this onto my uh, ArtShop folder. I'm just going to hit save, then hit render. And this will take a bit of time depending on how your machine is. Okay, so now I have exported my footage from After Effects. So I've added in all the uh, effects I want, any color grading, any animations or transitions I want, and exported it with the source being kept to match source high bitrate um, as an MP4. Uh, I can now start to um, re-import it and start adding the metadata in. So the way I prefer to add metadata to 360 footage is that I tend to prefer using Adobe Premiere. Uh, again, Premiere Pro is kind of already built for 360 footage, um, especially in the newer versions. So I've just opened up a new project. I haven't played a bit with any of the settings. I just clicked File, New, Project, give it a name, press OK. That was it. And I'm just going to navigate to where my export footage is. So I'm going to use um, some footage I've created earlier uh, instead of the one I've just made in the tutorial because um, I spent a bit long on that one. The one I did in the tutorial was just very uh, sort of whistle stop fly through kind of thing. And I'm just going to drag my two uh, two pieces of footage here. So I'm going to create two drag two of my compositions I've made into this project. The reason I'm going to select two is to show you how we can also adjust things like transitions and how multiple compositions together to create our final piece. So what I need to do is with anything that we're working with 360 within, after, within um, Premiere, sorry, we need to always make sure that the Premiere knows that it's 360 footage that we're working with. So within our project window, we right click on the footage or images. We need to go to modify, interpret footage, and just make sure that down here in VR properties that our projection is actually set. Now, because I've exported these from After Effects and After Effects, um, doesn't have the option to export uh, the 360 metadata within it, I'm going to have to add the metadata in within Premiere. So I'm going to use the VR properties, I'm going to press conform to, and I want it to be equiotangular, layout being monoscopic, and I'm just going to keep the 360 by 180, uh, which will create a perfect sphere. I'm going to press OK. And now these two pieces of footage here will be detected and add the metadata in to say that these are now 360 pieces. Um, to make sure that that's the case, I can always right click on one of these uh, and go to properties. And under properties, I should now have this information here. If that information is not there, you, this is why you need to conform it to apply the 360 um, metadata to it to allow Premiere Pro to know what the footage is and interpret it. So now we have these two clips here. Uh, if I want to preview this in um, how this would look on a 360 view, I need to use the inbuilt VR preview window. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go over here to my um, sort of preview, and down here at the bottom is a little plus button. I'm going to click on the plus button here, that's our button editor, and I'm just going to drag this toggle VR display onto my toolbar here. Now, it's already present for me because I've already been editing with 360 footage um, with Premiere before, so it's renamed my settings. But for you, that won't be there. So to do that, you need to go for that step. If I click on the toggle VR display now, it uh, may not necessarily open up the window. And that's because I've already created the, um, this sequence before uh, adding the metadata in. The easiest way of fixing this is to just remove my clips here and then simply create a new sequence. 
So I'm going to remove the sequence I made before. So again, this is why we should always make sure the metadata is there first um, before we make our sequence. Otherwise, you'll end up that error that you've just seen there. I'm going to drag this onto my sequence editor. So, so I've got my two clips here. And now if I click on the toggle VR display, we should open up this little square here. So for some reason, the VR display always opens up in a kind of one by one square, uh, which isn't representative of how it looks to the end user. So we're going to click on this little gear icon here, go to VR video settings. So with our VR video settings window open, I'm going to change my monitor view to be 160 and my vertical to be 90. So the reason we're doing 160 by 90 rather than 180 by 90, uh, which would be half of 360 by 180, um, is because uh, 160 by 90 is actually the uh, dimensions that um, YouTube handles 360 footage in. So this gives us a more accurate representation of how it will look on YouTube, because YouTube shows footage in 16 by 9, which is 160 by 90 in this case. So now in this window, I can click and drag around so you can see all my footage is now in this sphere. I can go to my next scene and again, it'll be exactly the same. I can move around by clicking and dragging in this window. Uh, what I want to do is I want to go uh, back to here and I'm going to make sure that these two values here are set to be zero and zero. And this zero, zero value here is important because this kind of gives you an idea of where the starting point would be for the user. So when the uh, VR 360 footage first loads up onto the user's device, uh, it'll always be set at zero, zero. And then once they start moving it or swiping, that will obviously change our vertical um, and horizontal positions. So this is where I can start to fix things. So because my door actually isn't where I want it to be, it's not in the middle. Um, again, I could have fixed this in After Effects, but Premiere, I can do it in Premiere as well. So good thing, like I said, the good thing about 360 footage is that we can always edit it after the effect. And I'm going to, within my effects window here, you may notice I've already started searching for it, but I'm looking for the VR sphere. Uh, so I'm looking for VR rotate sphere. I'm going to drag this onto my um, footage here. And I'm just going to adjust its pan and move it till my door is in the middle, keeping this VR window at zero, zero. And this now uh, reorientates the uh, footage and gives me the kind of initial shot that I want for the user. So the idea is I want the user to go through the door uh, and see where the next uh, sort of transition point is. So I'll walk through the door and then they'll be sort of looking at this back wall here. If I go to my next clip though, you'll notice that actually the footage here is making them look back on themselves, which wouldn't make sense if you're walking through a door, you wouldn't walk in and then turn around and look backwards. So I'm going to drag another rotate sphere onto my next composition clip. And I'm going to reorientate this one as well. So we're looking straight ahead. So we're going forwards as the journey. The user can still look around on their phone or swiping gestures on a, on a tablet or whatever. But this way it keeps the journey kind of coherent. They're not kind of going Bleh, and sort of reorientating every time they teleport around essentially. Um, another thing I quite like to do is a kind of nice little transition effect is I like to use the Mobius Zoom. So the VR Mobius Zoom, I'm going to drag this in between my two clips. I'll get an error because um, these two clips don't contain enough information to kind of indicate a kind of transition. So you'll say there's a um, repeated frame. I'll just hit OK. It won't cause any issues for my what I'm doing here. So I'm going to go back uh, to sort of in between these two frames. I'm going to toggle out of VR view. And this will get show me this sort of sphere and things start to sort. So this is a transition kind of blending between the two. So zoom in a little bit on my timeline. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that this sphere is located at where the next teleportation point would be. So for me, actually, it's in the right position. Um, but if it wasn't, I can click on the um, transition and I can always adjust the point of interest. So I move where the sphere would be to where the next teleportation point would go. And this kind of gives the user a kind of um, hint of where they should be looking next for the next um, warp, so to speak. So if I now hit play, you'll see it transition between these two compositions. 
and now we can continue editing this. We could add in um, intro cards or we can uh, add in new audio layers. We would now work with this as if we'd work with any other piece of footage. At this point, it's basically now just uh, Premiere Pro. But now, once we finish our piece, we'd go to File, Export, Media, and this is where we just need to make sure that we uh, make sure our settings are correct. So I'm going to keep it at H.264. I'm going to keep the preset to be match source high bit rate. I'm going to want to export the audio and video. This is where I would choose my output location. I'm not going to worry about that at the moment. I'm going to scroll down to where my video options are. And down near the bottom, you should have this VR video. And it should have VR, uh, video is VR enabled. And you need to make sure it's monoscopic 360 by 180. If that's not enabled, it won't add the metadata in on the export. I'm going to choose my save location. I'm going to hit export. This will now encode my footage. And this will again take some time depending on your machine. So I'm just going to leave it exporting. And what you'll get at the end is you should get your final piece. But now I can see my 360 footage here, so I've already added a little uh, placeholder intro. Um, but you can see that the user can move around, drag around. Uh, the reason this looks a little bit distorted and a bit um, zoomed in is because I'm using the uh, photo video preview in Windows. This isn't the way it looks on YouTube. Um, it's just a sort of weird thing that this player does. It's not representative of how it would work on um, YouTube or Facebook. But you can see that uh, our sort of Mobius zoom warps us to the next location. And this would now be, uh, if I was to put this onto any 360 player, this would now play as a 360 piece of media. So hopefully this kind of um, is useful. And we'll be looking at more 360 stuff, especially um, 360 3D tracking in future videos. Remember to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.